a couple more things I want to do. Um, I'll just come to this kind of point of view here. I'm going to drop a, uh, a camera. Control and click will give me a camera here. You can copy the, um, the numbers if you like. And then I'm going to jump inside here. Oh, not here. We haven't spoken about that, but don't worry. We will do later. If we jump into here and come down to our constraints setup here. Um, so at the moment, our boots and the body are, you know, they're not connected, which is makes sense. You know, we don't want them. They wouldn't be connected in real life, but, um, you know, they, they will kind of slip off and it might look a bit unnatural. So uh, we're going to force them to stay together with some vellum. Whoops. With some constraints, we're going to use vellum stitch points, okay, which we can use to connect uh, two pieces of vellum geometry together. So stitch points, and we can use the groups. So we're connecting the uh, changes to points, and then grab the uh, hunter, and we're going to connect the body to the. I'm going to do these separately, the shoes. So you could obviously do them together. One for the right boot, and now you can see what it's doing. It's sending, it's connecting each point on the hunter with um, a point on the boot, right? So each point on the hunter has one, and then each point on the boot has many. Obviously, we don't need uh, anything like that. So we can set up this, uh, where are you? Max distance, okay, we can use closest location on primitive as well it doesn't matter too much um, it just means it will connect to the primitive not the point well the location on the primitive and then we can just raise this up and you can see how that searches for um, point set this to 0.03 and that will work fine for us okay and the reason i want two separate ones is uh, because I want to release one of the shoes part way through the simulation, right? So I'll change this to uh, left, left boot, please. There we go. Okay. And let's see. We'll keep all of this the same, except I do want to create a group, upper group and call this left boot. Okay, so this is going to make a, a group of the constraints, not the geometry. Okay, so that we can work on these constraints within the solver because we want to be, um, I basically want to delete them um, like halfway through the simulation. So one of his shoes comes flying off, which I think would look um, nice. And we can control that and, you know, have artistic control and say when exactly I want them to come off, except um, instead of them just breaking uh, under some force, you know, you can do it. Well, you could do it either way. You could turn on breaking here, but I, I wanted to say at this frame, you know, when he's flipping over, I want the shoe to fly off, right? And then I can use this group to do that. Uh, but we're not going to do that yet. We'll do that in a, a later um, lesson. Cool. Um, and then one more thing I want to do in the so over here, I keep saying one more thing, but there's there are lots more things to do, but <laughs> um, something I want to do now. I'm going to just add some drag for the body. So we can use pop forces on Vellum as it's uh, under the hood, just really just take a pop sim. So I'm just going to use a pop drag, connect that up there, um, leave it on one, that's fine. And then let's set up the group to be the hunter. Okay, because I don't want it acting the same on their shoes or their clothes eventually, things like that. Okay, so we'll take a look. We'll run a flipbook with what we've got here. Um, it's not going to be that spectacular yet. Eventually, what we're going to be doing is pinning the body into the mouth so he stays there. Now he's just going to pop out, which won't look great, but well, it's a start. So let's run a flipbook from, we'll start with 140 see what we get with that right we got a few frames um cached out there so let's take a look so obviously yeah a bit weird at the moment but things are working you know the shoes are staying on the on the legs um he looks kind of rigid now but when you take into consideration the um how quickly the crocodile's moving 
you know, he's going to be whipping him around, spinning around. We need him to be really, really uh, rigid to put up with that. You can see when the leg goes in the in the mouth there, it just kind of, you can see that kind of bend there. I don't want him too bendy. But um, yeah, soon enough we'll be kind of, the idea is to pin the points in the middle of the torso and they will just stick into the into the mouth and then we don't have to do, deal with collisions in the mouth there either. Cool.